Hi everyone, welcome to part 3, Forensic Examinations 4, the examination, okay. Now we are in the Users folder of uh, the Windows 7 installation and in that you'll get a folder for all users, default user, default desktop INI and then you'll have the Hacker folder which we're going to look at in a sec, the Public folder and the Victim folder, alright. Now we're going to look at the, the hacker folder because there's a file in there called nturser.dat, okay, which is a registry file for that particular user. Um, each folder, will, each uh, user, sorry, will have one. We are going to export that so that we can examine it later on using uh, Reg Ripper. <sighs> Once it loads. Okay. These are the folders for... Uh, the user profile and there is our nturser.dat file alright now you can click on it which will bring up the data here alright and then you'll have the export option somewhere around here and it's basically like downloading a file off the internet you'll get your download box come up um, and then you tell it where to put it um, just so you know it, it took me a, a couple of goals to, to figure it out but when you actually go to extract the file in this it tries to put it into the root profile all right and you were working here in the sans forensic profile so I was dropping a file onto the desktop and it wasn't appearing I couldn't figure out why and it was obviously going onto the desktop for the user profile root okay um, this is gonna take a little while to load I expect oh, there you go there's the export option there all right now you click export and then you get it's the same as opening a file through a, a browser okay I'm not going to do it I've already done it I'm just going to come to that later on but that is how you would do it um, to examine it later on that's how you do it for any file within uh, autopsy here um, let's have a look for a second what we're going to do next oh yeah right before we leave uh, I want to show you the keyword search uh, stuff. What you can do here is enter keyword searches for uh, any data that you're looking for. So I can put in CC number, as you can see it's already been done, um, and then that will search through your evidence files for any instances of that string CC number. Now you can ask it to search using ASCII, which will just look for those letters and spaces. Unicode, which is important if you're going to be searching through things like uh, registry files because they incorporate Unicode. For those of you who haven't seen Unicode, the way it will be presented to you will be um, letter dot, letter dot. So whereas this is CC space number, if this was in Unicode it would be C dot, C dot, space dot, N dot and so on all the way up to the end, right? Um, you don't have to do that, you can just tell it to search twice, once for ASCII, once for Unicode. Okay, you can do grep expressions as well, we're not going to do that here. Um, and you have to tick uh, case insensitive if you're not sure of the actual case uh, that you put in. Like I'm not sure how CC number was presented previously, so I'll just put it in as is and I would tick case insensitive. Um, dependent on the actual size of your evidence files keyword searches can take a long time to run okay um, I've already done them I'll show I'll pause it in a second and open up the case that I've already done in to show you what the searches uh, search results look like but they can take a long time be prepared to do things like let it run overnight when when you do any kind of search for for data okay it, it's not a quick process all right there is an option here to extract strings now that will extract all the strings of information um, that you can then search through to, to speed up your keyword searches. All right. There's also extract and allocated, which will extract all the unallocated data, all the deleted data off the drive, and allow you to search that as well. All right. Um, again, we're not going to do that here. I've already done it. I'm going to pause the video, open up uh, the case in which I've already done it, um, and show you the results. Okay, right, I've opened up an old case that I've done the searches in. The previous searches will be listed here, okay, CC number, CC number, private stuff, private stuff. They come up twice because one search will have the ASCII 
um, results. One will have the Unicode results. All right. Now, private stuff was the folder. If you remember, was the name of the folder that we stored the CC number file in. All right. Um, I'll just show you quickly what the results look like. In the left-hand pane here, it lists the cluster number, um, and I assume that's the file offset. I'm not 100% at the moment. Um, the cluster number um, and the text hit there. We look at it in ASCII. All right. Let me just shift this over a little bit. All right. So what it says is ASCII contents of cluster 483366. It's all here, all right. If you scroll across, you'll see various bits of information. Uh, CC number dot text. Now that's the Unicode that I was telling you about, okay. Um, but we've had an ASCII hit of CC number dot text. So if we keep scrolling across, we will see it somewhere. Famous last words. It will. There it is. Okay. Um, now this. Uh, just looking at it, it doesn't tell you that much. However, if I just adjust this window here there's an option find metadata address okay now that will tell you which file this data belongs in okay and it's telling me that it is the nt-user.dat file for the user victim all right now we've extracted the nt-user.dat file for the hacker profile okay and we're gonna look at that in a moment again more hits. This is CC number dot link. All right, so it's matched the CC number string of text there. Um, you do that in ASCII. But this is CC number dot LNK. So what it's picked up is again CC number dot LNK. There it is. All right, that's a link file. It's most likely going to be a link file created in the recent files folder. Okay, which keeps a, a, like a list of the files that have been accessed. Um, that is going to have been created probably when we actually created the file itself. I can't remember whether we accessed the file as the user victim. Okay. Uh, I'm going to pause this again and come out of this because we're going to start looking at a couple of other things now. Hi everyone, sorry about that. Um, what we're going to do next is look at those timelines that we extracted. Okay, now I've already taken them out of this environment, this virtual environment, and put them onto my own desktop simply because the files are quite large and they take uh, a little bit too much memory than I'm going to be happy to use within the virtual box without getting it to crash on me. So we'll just minimize this at the moment. Okay, minimize that and that and that. And that's over there. Um, excuse the desktop, it is a bit apt at the moment, but it's been there for weeks and there's nothing to do with everyone trying to kill themselves at the moment in London. Um, right, these are the MFT outputs, alright? Um, we haven't come to those yet, so ignore those. But what I've got here is timeline after deletion, okay? Now that is, um, I've renamed the timeline.txt document from when we created that timeline. Right, so I'm going to open that up. And there it is. It's quite a large file. Okay. I'm probably going to have to pause it in a sec again to let it all load up. But it is quite large. And what it does is it's all listed in chronological order. All right. Of uh, various things that have happened on the system with regards to the files that are on there at the moment. Right. So I'm just going to pause it and let it load. It's going to be quite a big file. Hang on for Okay, so I think that's it. If we scroll all the way to the bottom, all right, um, this is the last bit of activity I think that's happened on the system when the victim profile logged in and suddenly realized that there was no um, stuff on the desktop, okay? see there's access there to the nt-user.dat profile uh, the nt-user.dat registry entry for the victim profile um, I'm not gonna sort of sit here and draft all the way through this because it, it, it could take a while but what happens as you scroll further up you'll start to notice things like uh, activity by the user hacker which is recorded at uh, 20 to 2 in the afternoon on the 4th of uh, August this year Alright, and then you can browse through and see the kind of things that have been interacted with, like there's 
use of the index.dat file, okay, which records internet transactions. Um, not sure whether you're aware of it, but it also records, there are various different index.dat files. Some will record weekly activity, some will record daily activity, I think one records cookies, um, and one, uh, but, but uh, they will record uh, local file activity with regards to a person accessing files, right? So we can look at the index.dat uh, index file um, and see that there's been activity with regards to the folder private stuff, keep out, and also the CC number file, okay? Um, looking through this, you know, as an examiner, you'll see that this user hacker has come in. Um, you can scroll all the way back up um, and see exactly where they've come in. Once you get your first instance of, of the hacker, if we scroll to the top and then sort of do a quick search for the user profile hacker, all right, um, close that. You know, I mean, I don't know why that's been recorded there. I left the machine on overnight and I've been trying to sort of do it when I have a bit of spare time. But that, from that, you can look down and see instances for the hacker profile again. Um, Again, more minute stuff. I don't know why it does that. Um, close. Right, okay, so now you can see at 20 to 2 in the afternoon, alright, some activity has taken place here. You can scroll down a little bit. Um, NTUser.dat activity. Um, keep going down. There's plenty of stuff going on. Save games. Uh, th these are probably, um, this is when the profile has been accessed, I, I mean you can take what you want from it, just, you know, there's a lot of information there for you to sit down and sift through, okay. Um, if you spend enough time looking at it, above the creation of the hacker file, you'll notice uh, interaction with uh, the util man uh, file that we spoke about. Um, I'll go back into autopsy in a bit and show you the file times associated with those three files which would be utilman, exe, utilman, old and command exe. Alright, and you can make a couple of uh, guesses as to what's happened by looking at those times and we'll go through that in a second. But I'm going to pause the video again because um, we've come to the end of, of the time for this one uh, and I will see you in the next segment.